Hello, uh, my name is Nick Huntington Klein. Uh, I'm the author of The Effect, an introduction to research design and causality. Uh, this is going to be the first in a series of videos that is going to be following along with that book. Uh, you can use it to accompany the book if you are reading through it. Uh, and uh, you can also use it, of course, to get yourself a little bit of a causal inference education. Causal inference being trying to figure out using data in some way, whether one thing causes another. If I take a drug, will it cure me of some disease? If I implement a policy, will it reduce crime or improve poverty or something like that, right? Maybe we run an experiment to do that, but a lot of the time we want to figure out the answer even if we can't. And this book is all about how to do those things. How can you do the hard, hard task of figuring out whether one thing causes another. Now you can check out the book for free. Uh, you can read the whole thing for free, in fact, on theeffectbook.net. That is effect with an E, not an A. Uh, you can also uh, find links there to buy the paper version of the book or the ebook version if you like. Uh, I recommend maybe buying the whole thing. I think it's pretty good, maybe worth your time. Uh, so uh, what are we going to be doing in these videos? Uh, well, we're going to be covering the content of the book. We're not going to cover literally every page of every aspect of the book. It's a 650-page book. That would be a lot of videos, but we are going to cover quite a bit, uh, whatever seems most reasonable to do. Uh, also not going to be going heavy into the coding examples in the book. There's lots of code in the book in R, Stata, and Python. Uh, but uh, we're going to keep that. You can see my other videos on coding if you want to get into that. Um, in, this, in these videos uh, on the book, we're going to be focusing on more on the content and concept of research design. Uh, so if you want to look at my other videos, if you look on my channel, you'll find plenty of coding videos if you want to implement these things. Or of course, you can just look at the book itself. It has plenty of coding examples. So what are we doing in this book? What are we going to be doing in these series of videos? Well, as I mentioned, we want to answer some questions about the world, and we want to know how to do that in the right way. We have lots of questions about the world. Anybody who looks out at the world, I imagine, uh, is going to have a couple of questions about what exactly is going on, and we want to understand what that is, right? How does the world work? We want to answer that question. Um, and so it's it's tempting and easy, unfortunately, to sort of throw a bunch of stuff together and think that that brings you to a good answer. Uh, it's very tempting and common to just find some, let's say, data that happens to relate to the question that you're interested in, and then to assume that that data answers your question. Uh, but that's not always the case. First of all, sometimes data is just bad. Sometimes data comes from a bad source, or it's unreliable, uh, or it's weakly measured, or it's inconsistent, or you know, maybe it's totally fine data. It just doesn't answer the question that you're interested in. It's about something else. Um, also, once we do have data, if we think our data is totally fine, we still have some problems because we need to figure out what is the correct research design to use that data in such a way that when we are done with our analysis, we have an actual answer to our research question. It is surprisingly easy to work with perfectly fine data uh, and do you the best analysis you think you can and then come to an answer that is a fine answer to a different question than you're actually interested in. And you don't want to trick yourself into thinking that you've answered the, the question that you want when you actually have it. Let me give you a quick example. And this is a case where somebody has actually intentionally done some pretty bad uh, research design. Uh, so if you've ever watched uh, advertisements for car insurance, right, something that you might notice if you watch a bunch of different advertisements for car insurance is that they all tend to say something like this. Switch to our company and people save on average, let's say $500. People who switch to our car insurance company save on average $500. Now, how could that possibly be? Because they all say that. So how is it possible that this car insurance company is $500 cheaper than this car insurance company, which in turn is $500 cheaper than the first car insurance company? That doesn't make any sense. There's clearly something wrong going on there. Uh, and uh, what's going on there is that we have a research question in our mind. What we really want to know is, well, which car insurance company is the cheapest, right? That's what we want to know. And so when we see data about that question, we see that this is data about the cheapness of car insurance companies and how much money people save, we assume that that data must answer the question in our heads, which car insurance company is the cheapest. But that's not the question that they're actually answering. If they were trying to answer that question, they had a bad research design. I think they probably just didn't actually want to answer that question. So what's going on there is that they ask only the people who do switch to their company how much money they save and who is going to choose to switch to a particular car insurance company. Well, it's what, whichever insurance company happens to be offering them a lower amount than they're paying right now, right? Uh, so you're only going to switch if you're going to save money with this particular car insurance company. Maybe they have a particular deal for people like you, whoever you happen to be, and that's why you switch. And so you saved money, even if the average person might find that that car insurance company was more expensive. 
So uh, they've got some data on people who switch, right? That's probably perfectly fine data. I believe that they actually have that data and it's probably pretty well measured. And then they did an analysis on that data. They took the average of people who switch and they said, hey, on average, people who switch, they save this amount of money. That's probably perfectly accurate. But it does not answer the research question of which car insurance company is the cheapest. And if we think that it does, we've made a mistake there. So this book is all about how to avoid mistakes like that, at least unintentional, right? If you, if you intentionally want to want to make a mistake, like I think the car insurance company are, are probably doing there, uh, you can still do that. So there's a couple things we're going to need to keep in mind, uh, and there are things that we're going to cover as we go through this book. First of all is trying to figure out what research question it actually is that we are trying to answer. Uh, so in the research questions set of videos coming up soon, we're going to think, okay, what are we trying to actually figure out about the world? What is our research question that we want to answer? Uh, we're going to talk about how to come up with a good research question, how to make sure that it is actually something that we can answer. Great. That's the first step. A little bit further on in the videos, we're going to ask the question, okay, well, we have some data. Uh, we have a research question that we want to answer. How can we make sure that whatever it is that we do to that data actually answers the question that we are interested in and not a different question? How can we make sure that when we have the data on what people pay for car insurance, that we are actually answering the question of which car insurance company is the cheapest and not the other different question of how much do people save on average when they do switch, right? Those are different questions. They would require different analyses, even if we had the same data to start with. So how do we know which analysis to do to get the one that we want and not the one that we don't? That's going to be something that we cover in the identification section of the videos. And then also much of the rest of the book will be about specific instances of that, because of course it gets pretty difficult. And the answer of how you do it correctly differs depending on what situation you're in. Of course, between those two things, between having a question and figuring out the right analysis to do to answer that question, we realize that most of the analyses that we're going to do are going to be about describing data, right? How can we describe a particular variable and what it looks like? Uh, what is the average, that's a mean, of the people who switch, right? That is an analysis that we do of the data. It's a description that we make of what the data is like. Uh, or about relationships between variables. If I implement this policy, uh, what does it look like? What is the effect on poverty, let's say? What is the relationship between this policy and poverty? So we're describing data, uh, and so we're going to have some videos on how to describe data coming between our research questions and our identification sections of the video. So that's the plan. Uh, I hope that you will stick around for these videos. I hope that you'll check out the book, uh, maybe buy a copy, or just read the whole thing for free. That's totally fine with me. Uh, I'm just happy to have somebody <laughs> taking a look at what I'm doing. Uh, I think it's pretty good. I hope that you'll come along with me for the ride. Thank you. Thank you.